hidden above the clouds in the steep mountains of Panama lies a high altitude cloud forest. You know, the environment here is very beautiful. There's everything from orchids to bromeliads. It's almost Jurassic looking out here. It's very prehistoric. The only thing this place is missing is some big freaky dinosaurs and pterodactyls flying around. Home to more biodiversity than any other country in Central America, biologists and ecotourists brave this dense jungle for a glimpse of the rare wildlife. If a biologist comes out here, some poindexter-looking bookworm from the university who's never had any survival training, all he's worried about is the bugs that he's studying. He's relying on battery-operated equipment to navigate, and he loses that equipment, he's just asking to die. Getting lost here can turn a simple scientific expedition into a struggle for survival. <laughs> if someone was caught out in the cloud forest unprepared, the chances are very high that you will die. Stranded in the high altitude cloud forest, experts in survival training, Cody Lundeen and Dave Canterbury, will show exactly what it takes to make it out of this Panama wilderness alive. It is very, very cold. Everything's wet, slick, muddy, and orienteering, forget it. This is one hell of a jungle. And she's a jungle to rip your face off and put it back on a different way. jungle right here, buddy. Wet, gnarly, nasty. I thought you liked jungle. I love the jungle. I don't love being in the jungle I'm not prepared for the jungle. There's a difference. I like diving, too, but I don't like doing it without a scuba tank. Well, it keeps raining, you will be diving. You're probably right. An Army-trained sniper who served in Central America, Dave Canterbury is no stranger to the jungle, but not one like this. I've been in quite a few jungles, but I've never been in a jungle that was this thick this cold and this wet all the time at this altitude. This is mile high stuff. You're in an area that's vulnerable to hypothermia. It's raining all the time. My experience in an area like this is limited. His partner, Cody Lundeen, has taught survival skills in the Arizona high desert for two decades. It's like walking through a bunch of string beans or something. But this environment at 8,000 feet above sea level isn't anything like the Southwest. It's cold and it's wet, and it's windy. I'm seeing my breath right now. Bunch of gnarly matted roots right here, man. Dave has vastly more experience than I do in the jungle, but still, this is a different jungle than he's used to, so it's gonna be a challenge for both of us. Be careful, man, I stepped right in the hole right there. Well, it looks like this is where he ended up. Well, I can already tell you, this guy's a dumb Stuck a machete in the mud. In this survival scenario, Cody and Dave only have the basic gear that a biologist would carry on a quick jungle recon. A poncho. It's pretty clean to me, man. Got a hood on it. A specimen jar. Ugh. It's like a bug collection jar with a bug hanging from nice. a piece of cotton. And a lighter. Tell me the thing flames up. Nope. Nothing. To be in a situation where there's two guys in a harsh jungle and no way to make fire sucks. So that's what we've got, man. Well, it is what it is, right? Yeah. Getting late in the day, we probably ought to find some place to shelter in and hunker down. Fort nightfall comes. I mean, it's a jungle. It's, that's what this but dude. Hypothermia is a danger. Out yeah, there. and no that, that's, about that's it. a twist to this cloud forest. In a high elevation forest. The temperature can drop below 30 degrees. To make matters worse, the dense canopy blocks most sunlight and traps moisture. You can just see the water moving through the air, oh, yeah. you know, it's coming unreal. off the trees and the mist. In a situation like this, your first priority is to stay dry. If you get soaking wet out here and it becomes nightfall and it gets cold up here in high elevation, 
You're dead from hypothermia. Priority has to be shelter, because night's coming. Which way are you hit? I'm going to head this way. OK, just remember to hoot. All right, hoot. This isn't a hot human environment out here. This is cold. Right now, that's hard for me to touch my thumb to my finger. That's not a good sign. So we need to deal with shelter, and then I need to try to deal with fire. These are like the skyscrapers of the cloud forest. These big oak trees are so high, and we're at such an elevation here that they actually scour the clouds. And they suck water literally out of the clouds and bring it down to terra firma. Squish, squish, squish. This is actually water pooling between my toes down here. Look at that. Poor place to shelter down here. So we need to move on. You know these giant ferns? has the fiddleheads on it. They're edible. So if I take one of these and bust off that piece, it's kind of like kind of as asparagus type flavor. Pretty good. I mean, not all ferns are edible. You want to be careful, but the giant fern here in Panama is. I'm going to bring this back one to Devo. So it's finger food for the trail. You know, there's no ideal shelter location that's going to be bone dry out here. It's not going to happen. That's why it's a rainforest. It's a matter of finding drier, not dry most of the time. And this spot right here is not too bad. It's wet, just like everything else out here. But it's also very well protected all the way around. Most of these orchids are growing on this outside of the tree. That means that's where the rain's coming from. The rain's not coming in over here as much. We might be able to build something right here to get us up off the ground, at least get us off this moisture. I've got some strong vines in here that I can use to tie with. There's some great big palm fronds right back here. And that's going to give me the resources I need for roof material. So everything's in one condensed area, and that's what I'm looking for. Hey, come here, Cody. Have a look at this, man. What? Come here and have a look at this. OK. You know, I don't know if Cody's going to like this shelter spot or not because it's kind of wet, but I know how cold it's going to get up here at night. So you've got to protect yourself from the elements. Hey, what's up, man? Want a fiddlehead, dude? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's not bacon, but it's something, you know? I understand, dude. What I'm picturing is basically a dome of palm leaves over top of this, just to hunker down out of the wind. This is definitely the lesser of the evils that I've seen out here. We're in the middle of a cloud forest with jack for gear. There is no ideal. Ideal is leaving in a jet plane with a martini, you know? I'll start gathering some materials for the shelter if you want to start working on the fire. Yeah, because I have some ideas. This lost person out here, what they did have are two elements of potential ignition. That Zippo lighter, it does have some heat value in the spark. And there's ether or alcohol in that kill jar that'll take that spark and make a fire. OK, yeah, there's some strong smell in there. There's a reason that bug is dead. Everything is going to be wet. That's pretty much a given. Look at the moisture that's coming out of that thing. It's just dripping wet. But I know that if I do get heat, it's going to take a lot less to dry out this twig and get it to burn than it is this twig to get it to burn. So right now, all I'm trying to do is get a floor in here. I want to make sure that I get us up off this wet ground. That's what's important. You know, if you're in this situation and you can't build fire, you can't get dry, and you can't get out of the elements, then you're taking a chance on dying in the night. Right now, what we got is we got a platform that keeps us up off the ground. Now I want overhead cover. It's not raining yet, but it could any minute. If Cody gets us a fire, we can have that heat rolling in there, and we'll be toasty dog. Most people fixate on lighting the fire, but fire needs to be built. Fire goes up. Heat goes up. So I'm trying to make some sort of a shape that allows me to get my primo stuff to be hit first by whatever flame I have. God willing, coming off that cotton ball. This is a dry -er. It's only moist, not totally sodden wet. Things are looking up. 
looking for chaos, fire demands organized chaos. So here we go. If I can get that cotton ball to light, it'll burn one time. I don't know what else we could do out here with this spark if this thing doesn't light. We need to dry out all this stuff here and it's not gonna go easy. Come on, baby. We're not out of the woods yet. Open it up a little bit. Give it some air. Give it some air. Maybe you can hear the moisture evaporate off. A lot of this is steam. Stuff trying to dry out. Come on now. Come on now. I don't know if it's gonna if it's gonna take. I'm starting to lose my flame. This stuff is just so wet. It's so wet. Come on. It's too wet, guys. Sorry. And so it goes. Never go into a cloud forest without a 20 minute road flare. Cody! Yeah, man, I'm right here. What's going on, man? I failed. I uh, didn't make fire. Looks like it's gonna be a cold night. The temperature is probably 50 degrees or below right now. This is one of the worst situations you could possibly be in. Cold and wet is an equation for death, period. I failed at fire. My fragile male ego has a scratch in it for sure. I didn't have enough heat, so I blew it. You're shaking pretty bad, man. I'm sitting here freezing my off. Shivering is the body's natural way of generating heat. It is also the first sign of hypothermia. Do some squats for five minutes, Dave. What's at stake now is staying dry and keeping as warm as possible. We're gonna suffer from heat loss from this ground being wet. I'll use this poncho on the ground, just something we can sit on that's halfway dry. Well, hold on a sec. If we put that poncho down there, we will destroy it, because that's a cheap poncho. <laughs> I thought we were gonna put the poncho to keep the rain off. Well, that was my original plan, but I thought we were going to have fire at that point. I, 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 well, I've choked on that, so things... Because the fire would have dried that out a little bit in there. It's not going to happen now, obviously. I understand right. it's wet. Right. Right. You can tell things are getting cranky. We need to try to pull together and do something before it gets dark. All right, well, let's just get it done. Whatever we're going to do then. So since that's static, you tie yours first. I was just going to do. Exactly. And then we can, the vines will give us some reach over on this end. I'm feeling lack of motor dexterity in my fingers. <laughs> a waterproof cover diverts rainfall from above. Nice. While several layers of dead leaves prevent heat loss to the damp ground. Look at this little hobbit hole. What do you think, man? This is it, huh? Yeah. If two people were in this situation, you're each other's heat source. You're trying to have the shelter to contain body heat. It's the best we can do. Yeah. One thing good about this poncho is it collected a lot of water. You're just gonna doggy down it? Oh yeah, but it's drinkable water. Free willy? What kind there of beetle's that? Nasty. Come here, boy. We just need to get out of this environment. That's the primary thing. Cody and Dave have one goal, descend from Panama's cold, wet cloud forest. But first, exploit the area for its natural resources. I hate to... <clears throat> cut this poncho in half. I'm gonna try to rig something with some leaves, something down and dirty, and we can save this piece of gear. 
Dave and I have one poncho between us, and we're both not really small dudes. I'm just gonna go about 50 yards up there. All right, man, I'll get this bad boy tore down. So I'm gonna use whatever I can find out here to mimic what that poncho does to try to keep my body dry like the indigenous peoples did around here. Try to make some sort of Panamanian poncho. These are called rooster tails to the native folks here because that's what they look like. And I like these because they have a lot of surface area. Look at this, it just keeps coming and coming and coming. Long piece of cord. So here's my palette, there are my paints. So now as the jungle music edges to a crescendo, I will start my improvised Panamanian poncho. What I'm gonna do is take some of these leaves and I'm just gonna layer those like fish scales, just one after the other and have a lot of overlap. The multiple layers around the body serve a dual function, provide cover from the rain, and conserve precious body heat. Essentially, I make it a shelter I can wear because my number one concern out here, other than being injured, is hypothermia. So if nothing else, it'll look really bitchin', jungle fashion. It's kind of like Flintstone-esque, you know? Kind of early Fred, you know, maybe late Barney. So now that I have that last leaf on there, I think I'm gonna call that good. What do you think? It's not exactly prom night, but I think it's good to go. Take my wrap, wrap it up. Hey, Cody! 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 I see your orange shirt, man. What are you up to? Check out this suit, dude. Holy cow, dude. Looks like a grass skirt. <laughs> you gonna do a hula dance for me? <laughs> no, because that might excite you. It probably would, man. Obviously, it's gonna shed some water. Yeah. But it's gonna keep your core warm, too, man. It's, I mean, it's pretty, there's a lot of insulated value there. Yeah. Awesome. So, everything's cool there? Yeah, we're ready to rock. Where? Down, until we find some water. Okay. In a high altitude scenario, Survival code says to head downhill. Want me to point? Yeah, go ahead, man. Okay. I'll follow you that way. I'm going your speed. Where the rain runoff leads to streams, then rivers, and eventually civilization. Definitely some gnarly terrain. Down about that. It'd be nice if it was actually thinning out here. I'm just gonna head for that tree. The only flat ground I see is right ahead of me. It's steep, isn't it? It is steep. Wow. This doesn't look good. What do you see, man? It looks really steep. All I see is a cliff. This is a death trap. It's 50, 60 foot vertical drop, but this might be the best option we got. But it's a task easier said than done. There's cliffs all the way around us, but this ficus tree's got roots going straight down to the bottom, man. It's got handles all the way down. We either go back up into the cloud forest and find another way around, which in my opinion is not an option. We need to take advantage of Mother Nature's ladder right here. It looks really steep. It's just plum vertical. I see a little bit of roots, but I don't see anything beyond that. This place sucks as far as the way down. I don't like it at all. We seem to have an array of tree roots to hold on to, but no, it looks damn near vertical. So I don't know what else to do. We're running out of options to get down though, man. Maybe we go find some vines somewhere in case we fall or slip or something. Yeah. I saw some stuff not too far back. I just got a good 25 feet of cordage right there. That gets us halfway home. This big one right here might be enough to hold us. I don't know. It took everything I could do to pull it out of the tree. So, I mean, I was hanging on, on 200 it? pounds a couple times, bouncing up and down to get it out of there. Well, I want to test it out. 
So I'm just gonna put a strangle knot in it and tighten it up on itself like this. And it ain't going anywhere. Easy. Choke up and lean into that tree. Whoa! All right, well, I ain't gonna hold 400 pounds, that's obvious. Because you jerked it, right? Huh. Well, what happens when you fall, Dave? Well, you shouldn't fall. Well, I guess you might fall. You're right. It's a jerk, you yeah. know? Then we're gonna have to try something else. If we have a lot of these, we could just do a braid or something. I'd say, if anybody's an expert at braiding, the guy with the golden locks would be that guy, so. I've done it a few times, yeah. So all we're doing is taking marginal vines and grouping them up into a formidable rank of different fibers that hopefully will have some tensile strength to get this job done. I went this way on the first vine, so I'm gonna go this way on the other vine and make X's. Alone, these things might be brittle, but there's power in numbers. I'm thinking maybe if we wrap the end of this thing down around your waist so you've got at least a safety net, and then you can free climb. Okay. Cody's not real happy about hanging off vertical surfaces. Dangling off of something, you know, is not his cup of tea. We got this one looby that we should put a loop in the other end. Yeah, I think we probably should. And if he starts to slip or if he needs help, he can holler up, and I can put tension on that rope around the tree to make sure he doesn't fall all the way to the bottom. One more half inch, buddy, and we'll cut this excess off and we're rocking. We need to do this as safely and slowly as possible to make sure that we both get down here in one piece. And I want to definitely make sure that Cody's comfortable with the situation before we even start, because the less comfortable you are in a situation, the more apt you are to make mistakes. If I hear you scream, obviously I'm going to pull it tight. <laughs> <laughs> OK? The universe decided to stress. Exactly. Yeah. OK, bro. I'm very aware of the fact that the vine I had in my hand before snapped. My main thing is to free climb as carefully as I can. Slow. Good. Take up a foot. Got it. Stop. A little bit of rope. Okay, stop. Okay. I'm down. Okay, man. I'm gonna cut a tree off up here to get a good anchor. Okay, Cody, I'm coming down. Okay. Three points of contact is what I want all the time. So that rope gives me that third point or that fourth point. My foot slips off, I've got that rope to grab onto. Left or right? The little tree where you're at, go to the left of it. The one right crawling up your Go left of the tree, go right of the tree. That's a tremendous help coming down because I don't have to bend over and look as much where I'm going. Other left. It's not a comfortable feeling to see a partner up in the air on the edge of a cliff. You doing OK? You want them down safe. I gave up. You OK? Right in the balls, dude. I just took it right in the sack. You're not singing soprano? Soprano. No, it wasn't quite that bad. It was a package teaser. Man, holy cow. You okay? <laughs> That's hard on old man. Dave and Cody's risky descent gets them further down the mountain. But they're still in the middle of over 800 square miles of uninhabited tropical forest. The main thing that you have to navigate in an area like this is downhill is going to lead somewhere, usually toward water, toward civilization. Doesn't even look jungly down there. This place, you know, I can tell from my feet, it's still damp, but it's not like the whole place has been under the ocean for a month. It almost looks like an eastern woodlands deciduous forest. At 5,000 feet above sea level, the cloud forest gives way to drier ground and a new ecosystem. 
What's that over there? Look at that. With brand new risks. Oh, wow, dude. That's a fertile man. That is one bad snake. It's like a cotton mouth on Viagra right there, dude. The deadliest snake in Panama, the Fer de Lance, has hinged fangs that inject twice the amount of venom needed to kill a fully grown human. That's probably responsible for more deaths by poison snake bite in Central America than any other. Easy, easy, easy. Easy, big boy. They'll put a strike on anything. Look at the diamond head on that thing. I mean, you can just tell he's action. That's all there is to it. OK, so we're out of the cold and into the snakes then, I guess. I would say you're right. Great. Hold on a sec. That's water, man. I hear there's water down there in this drainage. That's not the wind. We have water. Oh, look at that. That's nice, isn't it? That looks good, man. That big clearing up there. Well, hell, that's the first open piece of land we've exactly. seen. Exactly. This is probably a good spot to try to find some resources around here. Rivers usually lead to civilization, but with night approaching, food and shelter take priority. If you want to hit shelter, man, I'm going to go check out the river, see if I can exploit some resources out here. I'm going to stick to the meadow. It's the first open ground I've seen since we got here. I'm looking for anything I can find that might burn. That cracks what I'm looking for. The size of this pile of flood debris right here, man, from when this rivers got real high and washed all this stuff down. The Panama cloud forest gets 30 feet of rain per year, making the jungle's lower elevations susceptible to flash floods. There's a burlap bag over here hanging off this stuff. That's trash deposited down through here on this flash flood. And I can see some crates from fruit. That's resources that are not out here. There's civilization that's washed down from, but it could be 10 miles. This wire's a huge resource. Sharpen that up down here on one of these rocks, you got a fish hook. Bleach. So this is poison. Big skull and crossbones on here. Smells like paint thinner. This is an awesome find. I'm gonna protect this in my life right now. This ripped up bag right here ain't good for much of anything, but it will shed some water. I got an idea for that. Cody's gonna love this. Without a food source, finding a natural shelter versus building one saves precious calories. This is kind of the thing I'm looking for. It already has a natural shelter right there. I'm always looking for something that Mother Nature has already constructed. But not right here. You know, but this is not a this is not a good place here. There's over 100 species of bats in Panama alone, but only ones like this, the classic vampire bat. You can tell it's a vampire bat because when it hangs, it kind of hangs like this. You know, it doesn't hang like the classic Count Dracula. What they do is obviously they suck the blood of the host. They have an anticoagulant called draculin, which is in their saliva. That anticoagulant causes the victim to bleed and they lap up the blood. And even more kind of freaky is they come to their prey, they fly in, then they land and they crawl on all fours and sneak up to get up to that victim to bite. And they usually crawl up the leg and head to the neck of the victim. It's just, it's just kind of sleazy. Usually it's a single host they return to night after night, but now there's two new hosts in the area, one named Dave and one named Cody. They're silent, their bite is painless. Dave and I could both end up in a pool of our own blood, you know? I'm not really, it's just, uh, it's not a real good situation. I'm, not, I'm gonna nix this area. Dual survival's art of self-reliance. All of these bromeliads live up in the trees, and because they don't have roots, they have to collect the water. You can see how much water comes out of that. Bromeliads can grow over 10 feet high 
and holds up to two gallons of water. It runs right down these cup-shaped leaves and into the plant itself. And you can get that out of there with a bamboo straw. Now, that's dirty water, but it's drinkable water. The rainforests of Panama span nearly 10 million acres and are home to over 10,000 species of flora and fauna. But with abundant wildlife comes the threat of predators. Whenever I approach a shelter like this, I'm gonna do it with caution. You just kind of make a little bit of racket. This is perfect habitat for a snake. It'll bum me out if they're in there, but this is their home, not mine. This is a perfect area if I clean it out. So if I can come to a place that's already home with the mint on the pillow and not have to do anything, then why in the hell wouldn't I stay there? Cody! Hoo, hoo! Hoo! Where you at, man? I'm here. What's going on, brother? What the hell are you wearing? What's with the Oompa Loompa thing? Hey, man, I wanted to get something to protect my core temperature. I'm tired of being wet. I've been wet long enough. There's a big pile of flood debris over there, man. Are you saying there's human debris over there? Yeah, I got a bunch of it. This is what you're really gonna like. It's definitely bleach. Cool, Dave. That's a hell of a find. This is the Coupe de Gras, man. Toxico. It smells like paint thinner to me. I got an idea. We might have sure flame again. Uh -huh. We'll see. Yeah. You know, this looks good, man. That's definitely uh, dry, that's for sure, man. It's drier. If you work on that fire, the main thing on my agenda now is water. All right, man. So we meet back here, then, Yeah, right? man. So I've got this spent lighter in here that doesn't have any fluid in it. I've got this bottle of paint thinner, or at least a little bit of it. I'm going to try to use this just like a normal lighter. I'm going to pull the guts out of it. And this cotton batting inside here should absorb this paint thinner just like it would lighter fluid. At least that's my hope. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. Now we're ready to rock and roll. Wherever there's human trash like that and a drainage, I'm thinking diarrhea and dysentery. The toilet could be that creek. So now we have a way to disinfect that. Now people think, oh, if you gather water right below those rapids over there, it's gonna be cleaner. You know, viruses, protozoa, bacteria, and parasites, they don't give a damn if the water's aerated or not. So that's a myth. I'm gonna point the opening of the bottle downstream. Point it upstream, you're gonna get floaters in there. Point it downstream, better water clarity. Chlorine bleach is the common name for sodium hypochlorite, a chemical compound used since the 18th century as a disinfectant. What I want is four drops of bleach per quart or a liter. I've got a gallon of water, which is four quarts, so four times four is 16. I want 16 drops to fall in this bottle. So how I'm gonna try to control that is put this leaf in here, hold it with a twig, so it kind of slows down the drops. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I'm gonna wait a half an hour for the bleach to do its killing of the waterborne pathogens that are in the water. This stuff here in a survival situation, especially an urban survival scenario, multiple uses. Clean up after a dead body, disinfect a place to go to the bathroom, disinfect your water, all for two or three bucks, a gallon of household bleach, it's almost worth its weight in gold. Like some sort of animal hole there. And I don't know, and I'm not from Panama, but that's really fresh earth. Hey, I'm from Badger country. That's almost a badger sized hole. That thing's almost like a football. Hey, Dave -o! Yeah! What's up? This animal dig right there, it's yeah. real fresh. I don't know what the hell it is. It's hard to say, but I mean, not a lot of animals dig tunnels underground like that. Down south, we take a blunted stick, just start shoving it down the trench. 
whatever's in there is food, and anybody in this situation needs to put calories in their belly to keep feeding that furnace so they can keep their body's core temperature in check. You want to make a couple poles while yeah. I watch? Give me a second, man. OK. So what our plan is, I'm going to take progressive sticks and poke them into the ground further and further and further until I found them, grab them by the tail with both hands, and pull them out alive. Any movement? All right, man. So you're the kill zone, ideally. You ready? Yeah, man. I'm just going to start working over that area. Work it in. There you go. Good man. Whoa. It's a stick, Cody. Freaked me out, brother. I don't feel anything moving. You might not be in there. Just watch it. Nope. There's movement. There's something you in there. You got something moving? Something right under my stick. I'm touching him right now. OK. I don't want it to come out this way, because we don't know what it is. Careful, man. You don't know what the hell that is. That's what I'm looking for, see what it is. Oh, yep. Uh -huh. Oh, it's an armadillo. I can see a shell, just barely. There's his tail right there. He's trying to go the other way now. He's digging. He's digging down. He's going straight under the ground. I got a tail in my hand. He's digging. He's going straight under the ground. Get him with one hand? That's what I'm trying to do, man. They're bug eaters. Not going to hurt you any. Survival situation, you take what you can get. Did you get her done? Got her done, brother. There's actually quite a bit of meat on this dude. I mean, look at the hams on that dude. Look at that. that was freaky. It's like a wall hanging. That was crazy, isn't it? It's like a shield. Armadillo actually means little armored one in Spanish. And I thought this was a pretty small critter, but it's like a badger. The thing is bred to dig. So when you dig, you build muscle. So essentially, it's a bicep covered with armor plating. It looks pretty well cooked, man. What do you think? You're the armadillo guy. <laughs> okay, man. Ready for some dilla? What part is this? It's a leg. Got to kind of break it out of there. Mm, damn. Well, look at you go, pick eater. Look at you go. Hey, when it comes to meat, buddy, I don't pick. I eat. Tastes a little bit like chicken to me. Yeah, it's kind of chickeny rabbity. I mean, chickeny rabbity. Chickeny you know rabbity. I mean? Yeah. Or rabbity chickeny. Or rabbity chickeny. You hear that, man? The howler monkeys are going nuts. There's one right there in that tree. Isn't that cool? Yeah, they're checking us out, man. Wow. <laughs> they don't need armadillo, do they? Here's where that trash is at, man. I mean, obviously, that's human debris. Agricultural debris leads me to think upstream might be the way to go, but common sense tells me downstream's the way to go. I'm looking at how little that bleach bottle is beat up. That thing reeked. That chlorine's fresh. Well, I can't argue with the fact that the trash tells me upstream's the way to go. We can head up and at least go. See that saddle there? If we at least approach that saddle and maybe get a vantage. If we don't find anything, we turn around. Let's do it. Get thick in here again. Hey, look at that. Look what's stretching across there. See it? Yeah, that's a water pipe going downhill this way. Hey, Cody, there's a road right here. Good job. All right, <laughs> man. Cody and I started up in a cloud forest. 
high elevation, cold temperatures, constant wet. Decided to take a downward route and find water. The major lessons to be learned here are that survival has variables. Everything changes. If you fixate on one certain goal and don't have a plan B, that will cause you distress. Be like the willow, not like the oak. The oak breaks under stress, the willow bends. Good job. Look at all those chickens. chickens. Here's some tasty morsels. Hola. Hola.